G'day everyone, welcome to The Sound of Imagery. This is episode four and today we have a special guest. We have Simon Pollock with us. Hey Simon, how are you doing? I was so tempted to press that button, mate. <laughs> what button is that? What button's that, Hi, mate? Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me along. It's, uh, it's good to good. be here so That's far. Fantastic, mate. Fantastic. And uh, Lee and Greg, what have you been up to this week? Uh, well, we're still in lockdown, so you know, um, not a lot, not a lot. Homeschooling, working. Fair That's enough. about it. Fair enough. And yeah. Lee. Uh, I'm well. I'm I'm lucky. Um, I've one of my clients in the US has got some editing work that they need me to do. So I've been um, homeschooling in the mornings um, and then editing in the afternoons and then taking breaks to build Lego with my son. So yeah, pretty nice. good. Very nice. That's Very nice. nice. Awesome. Well, another episode, another conversation. So let's let's dive into it. I'm interested to know from from the panel, how many lenses is too many lenses? Because I looked in my cupboard the other day and I've got quite a number of lenses and they just sit there collecting dust. And I'm thinking, do I sell them or do I keep them? So over to you guys. How many lenses is too many? Um, well, I mean, I would, what's, what's the old phrase? You, um, lens you, date, you No, you date the camera, you marry the lenses. You know, so I, I think what, you know, one thing to keep in mind is obviously the lenses are going to last you a lot longer than cameras. So also i'm a hoarder so maybe don't take my advice but you know you're gonna generally you're gonna hang on to lenses longer than than your cameras um but i suppose as long as they're useful so i think the, the key there is you know if if the lens has been sitting in a drawer for two years then maybe consider you know turning it into some cash um but i reckon you know that there's there's times that you're going to need it of course I'm a bad example because please hold caller. There you go. This is a 100 mil Zeiss cinema lens um, <laughs> that's been modded for a Sony mount. Okay. I don't use it that often, but look at it. It's the size of my head. <laughs> How many times have you used it? Three. Yeah. Have, but, you, have, you, have you made the money on it? Yeah, return on investment? Yeah, no, no, this, <laughs> no. Um, but it's just, for product stuff, this is just gorgeous. Is that a macro? Is it a macro? No. Yeah, it's 100 mil macro. 100 mil macro. Yeah. That's a beast. And a T-stop, right? Instead of F-stop. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole so city a, thing, right? Yeah, T2.1. Oh, 2.1. Okay. Did you drop it? <laughs> no, 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 no. The, no I, I, I dropped the lens cap. That's heavy enough. <laughs> oh, my Lord. That yeah, would man. have been funny, wouldn't it? On way to up the ratings, mate. Uh, yeah, for sure. I would have laughed <laughs> and cried at the same time. <laughs> oh, dear. So what about then you, he, Then he would have used it four times. That's it. Uh, so how many lenses do you have? What have I got here? Six, six lenses, three cameras. I think that's a good ratio. Okay, fair enough. And how uh, many of those lenses do you actually are, use? Uh, I use all of them. Um, they're all Fuji. Pro, uh, all but one are primes, Fujifilm XF primes. And okay. I've got a 55 to 200 zoom that, uh, you know, I, I use for a little bit of reach. I don't take it traveling. In fact, when I, usually I go to Japan, as you guys know, once a year for a, a, uh, a photography excursion on my own and last time all I took was uh, a 23 millimeter on an X-T3 and my X-70 as a backup but I find that the less lenses I have the better because it forces me to not rely on lenses to do the work for me it makes me walk rather than using a lens to reach um, I know that different lens focal ranges obviously give different compressions and looks and all that sort of thing. But um, I often get asked by people, because we do a lot of education, Lee and I, on photography gear, I get asked a lot, you know, what's the best lens? And it's like, well, what have you got? Use that until it's useless and then go for the better lens. So I'm more of a less is more kind of guy uh, for the most part. I know when I first kicked off in Fujifilm, I had almost every lens 
uh, that they had on offer. And I, eventually I sold them because it was just more of a collection thing than a, a useful thing. And I found that I became a better photographer by slimming it down quite a bit. Yeah, be, be Greg, don't be me. Yeah, don't be a hoarder. I mean, yeah, I mean, and having said all that, so like, you know, most, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of lenses, but my 35 mil lives on my camera most of the time. And yep. that's, yeah, and that's, and that's my favorite sort of, and even, it's funny, even when I shoot like APS-C, like crop sensors and stuff, I try and then shoot with a 25 or thereabouts so that I get around the 35-ish kind of look. Um, yep. So yeah, that's definitely, yeah. So, so, similar thing, it's, it's one of those, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm now listening in, 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 in the internal conversation of, but what if you need this and what if you need that and then the other and, and then the little devil on my side. Yeah, but you never use them. You never use them, so you should get yeah. rid of them. But I love them so much, so I'll stop talking. To someone else go. But no, look, I've, I agree. Like you know, I carry the 23 a lot. That's my favorite lens, and that's a pretty much a 35. But I've got I've got mates who you know when they go out for we meet up for just a shoot. They'll bring this huge backpack full of every lens they own and they spend more time rummaging through their bag than they do looking for the shot. And I think that's just a waste of time. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Simon? How often do you get out with your camera and what, what lens do you like to run with? Um, I, I only have one camera at the moment. I've, <clears throat> I went through a phase of collecting. Um, I went from Canon to Sony and Sony to more Sony and Sony to more Sony. And I, th I have six lenses, but I just, this 35, it's a Zeiss 35 1.4, sits on my camera quite a bit. And if it's not on my camera, it's usually the 55. And the 55 uh, deserves a spot on the mantelpiece. Uh, it's been kicked across a concrete um, courtyard by my child Ooh. while I was photographing him playing soccer. And it's still, it's, it lives. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting having assisted Lee Herbert on a, a couple of occasions. I've carried his bags with lenses in them. <laughs> and I can attest to the fact that he is a hoarder. He does, <laughs> he does like a bit of gear. And I don't <clears> – <throat> we're moving on. Um, but it's interesting <laughs> because on shoots, he might only ever use one or two lenses, but there's 17 on offer, you know. So what is that about, Lee? Is it about just in case? Um, I think it's a combination of just in case and also I charge my clients an obscene amount of money, so I've got to turn up with a lot of gear. The amount of <laughs> <laughs> It's all visual. It's all visual. No, I, I, I'm, I'm kidding about, about that, Pop. But it's, it, it is, I'm, by nature, I'm a warrior. Like, mm. I just, I, I'm, I sort of, I, I, I try and plan as best I can. So I'm always, you know, when I'm packing for a shoot, I'm always going, oh, well, you know, this might come up and that might come up and this might come up and that might come up. And so it's, it, it's, it's the, I just, I, I, it's almost like a safety blanket. Like I like having it available just in case. Having know. said that, since I moved uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, I actually got rid of quite a few lenses and just went to the Holy Trinity of, you know, a nice 14 to 24 kind of wide 24 to 70 and then the 70 to 200 Pretty and goes, yeah you know and, and and so now i've got all all three of those particularly because one of the reasons was i got the a7s mark 3 the fx6 and the fx9 and those are all from a video perspective very good at autofocus um and up until the last year or two autofocus it's been there for video but for the really sort of so the kind of stuff that I do, manual focus was was better. And manual focus is still better for a lot of things. But the autofocus is good enough now that I can actually trust it for some shots. And so I needed to get rid of some of my manual lenses to get some automatic lenses so that I had those. So yeah, now I've got those three and those those work pretty well for me. And then I still I still have some of my manual sort of stuff to to go to when I want to just have more control. So to pros, leader pros, if you could only keep one of those lenses in your cupboard, what would it be? I think it would be the 56 mil 1.2. I'd, I'd have to say I've got the APD, uh, which is like a, uh, it's got the neutral density filter built in. So basically it gets the bokeh nice, smooth and creamy. Um, and that's the only reason I use it. It's on my camera pretty much all the time and all the other lenses I have. 
they just sit in the cupboard. So I'm thinking just ditch them, you know, maybe give them to Lee well, so, uh, or Simon so you can play soccer with them. <laughs> <laughs> My children about, love it. Yes. Yeah. And Simon, you're the 35 mil man. Why, why shoot 35 mil over as your prime lens? You know, it was interesting um, when I uh, was using Canon 5Ds, it was all about zooms, 2470, 1635, 2470, 7200. There was nothing else ever on my camera, but I was shooting live music at the time. And that's that's what you use. You know, you might muck around with a prime every now and then. And I had a 51.4 and and I'd had a had an 85, 1.8, whatever the cheap Canon one is. And I had them on the camera sometimes, but it was all about 2470. But then I moved to Sony and I thought I want to simplify things a little bit. Mm. And I do have a couple of zooms. I've got a 7200 um, 28 and a 1635, but um, the primes, the 35, the 55, 85, uh, just, I mean, they're super sharp. They're just beautiful. And they make you think a bit more, you know, like now, like Greg said, I used to, and I'm sure Lee can back me up. I used to be the guy that would take a backpack and I mean, I work for a backpack company, so I'd take a different backpack, but I always had to have all the gear with me Yeah. But now. I will take one lens on one camera, maybe on a shoulder strap or in a, like a shoulder bag. And, and that's kind of it. And, and slow myself down and think more about what I'm doing. That said, and jumping back to what Lee said, um, you know, he's, he's sort of like anxious about having the right gear with him on a shoot. It's not, I mean, it's, it's that as well. <laughs> we all have that. But if you're being paid to be on a set, you know, you want to take all the gear because that's called being professional. Yeah. You want to make sure you can get the job done. True, but, true. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, on a just walking around, or you know, I take my camera everywhere, so it's just a 35 or your phone. And it's yeah. like, you know, it's what you see. Well, the 50, what is that thing they say? The, the what are the eyes 50 mil equivalent or something? Whatever, That's right, yeah. yeah. But I, I think, I think it also depends on the type of shoot. Like, um, just sort of as someone was saying that, I was thinking, like, if I'm doing a studio shoot, I'm far more likely to bring everything because that way you've just got the bags all up against the wall. And then if you're like, you know, you're trying something, it's, ah, oh, it, this isn't quite working. I'm going to, I'm going to put on a zoom and, and go to the back of the room and try and compress things a bit more and what have you. Um, whereas, yeah, if it's something like, you know, someone, when you and I have done stuff with Glenn and we've been running around Melbourne, just shooting stuff. Um, anytime when I've got to schlep it on my back, I'm going to force my, it's going to force me to be more selective and not bring everything because I don't want to schlep it all with me. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, in that case, if you're coming, yeah, we can bring everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mush. Right, I'm going to have it. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. So, so, Simon, you mentioned companies before that you work for a backpack company. Tell us what you do for those that don't know because you're, I mean, you're well known all around the world. We, I just we, go on TikTok. You go on TikTok. Right? Yeah. Well, actually, I, no, let's not talk about TikTok. It's funny. Um, mere seconds before you hit live, I, I shared a, um, I've been looking at TikTok in terms of advertising for my clients recently. And I shared a funny TikTok video on Facebook earlier. Crime. I'm 46. We don't do that. Uh, and um, Ben, um, Ben Lane, who I'm sure some of you have heard of, uh, he just tagged me in a post. Um, it's in the Dad Patrol group, and it said, "What's TikTok?" And it's a meme that says people over the age of twenty logging into TikTok, and it's a, a room full of kids with one adult sitting in the middle of it. <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm that guy." <clears throat> um, what do I do? I'm a social media manager, uh, so I do the Facebook and stuff for only Lee on Silent um, for photographic companies. Uh, so I've got uh, a few clients, camera bags, and uh, I nearly said tripods, so I don't have a tripod brand anymore. I just have a lot of tripods next to me tonight. Uh, lenses, speaking of lenses, Tamron Australia, um, KL Australia, Think Tank, they make camera bags. There's one over there. Uh, tether tools, um, some exciting stuff coming from them soon. That's what I do. Nice. You all went really quiet. In fact, Lee, I think you're on silent. What's it called? Mute. I was, yeah, I, was, yeah. <laughs> I am on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I was going to say that Tamron released a new lens today, uh, the Fuji lens. But um, let's, a, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the first Fuji uh, mount release. So that was interesting to see. Well, it also comes in Sony mount. 
<laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> that, that, that didn't make the news, mate. Come on, people use Sony lenses. Look I did lead with the uh, the Fuji side of that story because it's good. I mean, you know, a lot of brands um, have chased the E mount for a bit now. Um, you know, the Tamron's, the Sigmas. But uh, it's, it is actually exciting to see a uh, Fuji. It's Fuji X mount, isn't it? Yep. Great. Yeah, Greg, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, to see them um, coming out with an X mount lens. So awesome. Very excited to see how it is. And uh, Greg, talking about other companies, you wanted to have mm-hmm. a chat about um, Australian manufacturers because I think we're seeing uh, a lot in our industry coming out of Australia. Can you, can you name it? Yeah, we're seeing more and more. Um, like I think it's always interesting because when we talk about photography gear, we typically think Europe, a little bit of America, um, and obviously Japan uh, as kind of like the, the, the primary uh, locations for not not necessarily manufacturing sites, but obviously for the company owners, the, the you know the country of origin. And uh, it's always great, you know, especially especially in the sort of the situation we're in at the moment. A lot of local governments are really spruiking shop local, and it got me thinking about local uh, Australian companies that produce or, or at least develop or design camera gear. And you know, a lot of people might be surprised to hear that the likes of Rode, uh, Blackmagic, and um, those two in particular, they're quite big, well-known companies, especially in videography, that they're actually Australian-owned, from my understanding, from my limited research. Um, Lee Herbert could probably. Yep, probably no, they, they, yep, they are, and um, there's also like Rhodes been around for for Yonks. They're based up in Sydney. Black Magic is based uh, down here in Port Melbourne, um, and Adams yeah. as well. Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah. Wow. So that's really handy. You just uh, you know for your gas there, Lee. You just walk down the street into the factory and say, oh, no. "You guys know hey. me, right? Here's my bag. Yeah. Fill it." Yeah. <laughs> where's that? Where's that sound bite, Simon? Oh, only Herbert. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, it, it, that, that would be one of those situations where you know, never ask people, "Do you know who I am?" Because very often they'll go, "No, we don't." <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Get out of our store. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Get yeah. off our yeah. lawn. Yeah. Put on some pants and um, get out. <laughs> yeah. Do you? So yeah, I just wanted to open up the floor to you guys. Are there any other sort of Australian brands that um, you know the folks out there listening and 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 watching? Of may not realize they're actually Aussie companies. I'm going to rattle off one. Lucky Straps. I was just yes. about to say Lucky Straps. Oh, there you go. Yes, That's... They are, I mean, they are, you know, they are an Aussie company. Like They are, yeah. But, Bendigo. Yeah, yeah and the straps are made in Bendigo. Mm. Yeah, they make them in uh, yeah, in Bendigo, which is great. Uh, disclaimer, we, we actually do write for them. So uh, they're, they're yeah, an awesome they company. Client. Yeah. Justin. Yeah. We um, love working for them. Yeah. So he, he's one of those people that... Um, I don't know. He's just really switched on. He's uh, he understands what a photographer wants, and he's made a product to fit. So I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have, have you seen Lucky Straps before. Yeah, I've I've got I've got some in the in the cupboard. Of yeah. course you do. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I even ask that? <laughs> some? How many? Um, yeah, I like that. Some. No, some. no, no. Just 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 one. It's, hey, at least I know which cupboard it is. A one yeah. for the bag for Simon to carry. Right. Uh, I have my own. You yep. have your own. Nice. <laughs> Have them since yeah. you have you got one, Lee? Have you got a lucky strap? I do actually. I, yeah, I so, was yeah. um, gifted one uh, probably when they first came out. Um, mm. I can't remember who it was by, but uh, yeah, thanks to whoever gave it to me. It yeah, was awesome. It, it might actually have been Justin. Remember, he came to one of the Fuji walks way, way, way long ago. Uh, I remember one, one in it, Melbourne, it, maybe. It was the one in the park next to the museum. Um, no, no, no. It was. Um, when was there? It was a people with cameras event. Yeah, it? it was a people with cameras event, and I remember we went out for dinner at like some, like like a restaurant right. like across the road from the park where we were. Yeah, those were the days when we could meet up and oh, take no. photos. Hot events. Leave the Go house, for a beer breathe, afterwards. Breathe, eh? oh. I miss I that. Have a sad noise in my buttons. I've only got sad trombone. <laughs> 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 Another company, um, Memento Photo Books. Uh, ah. They're in the photo space as well. They've they're an Australian company. Oh, well, cool! They were when they started. I think they make some beautiful stuff. It's mm. a, I used to order them for weddings, actually, right. uh, in my cheap ass weddings. But um, 
yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the magazine style is, is really popular in wedding photography. A lot of people who, you know, think uh, full page, but they actually want to see more of their guests. And when you put it into a magazine style in a memento album, it works quite well. So that's all good. Um, Shaki James, he gave a shout out uh, the other day on Twitter. So he's, he's interested in coming on the podcast. So Sharky, if, uh, if you're hearing this, mate, get in touch. Uh, I know that uh, he said that on Twitter that the only reason he's coming on is because Lee Herbert. Maybe you can try and get some free gear or something from him. Hi, I'm Lee Herbert. <laughs> I told you at the start, you may live to regret this. Yeah. And he does know Simon as well. Everyone knows Simon. So that was, that was good. I said, uh, I said, we're going to have him on. So, you know, he's next. That's exciting. It is. When was the last time you went to Utah? Where he is? Anyone? Never. I've been been to Utah once skiing uh, many, uh, probably 12 years ago. Hang on. Isn't Utah the desert? I've, there's two sides of Utah. There's the part. Mountains. It's really weird because you can stand on top of the mountains and you can turn around and look at a ski field, turn around and look at the desert. And it, wow. It's bizarre. I've got another, it's all flats. I've got another Australian company. They're, they're, they're new and I haven't tried their stuff yet. Um, but a mate of mine, uh, Alistair Robbie, put me onto them and I'm, I'm keen to maybe have a play. They're called es- Espresso. Um, oh, yes. They they make like a like a like an external display, but like a portable display. So imagine I've seen them. Yeah, it's it's, it's like a tablet, yeah. but, but it's just a display and it's touchscreen and it looks really cool. It yeah. is. We were chatting to them last year, sometime. Later. We were, we were actually. We we um got in touch with the well, the founder actually got in touch via LinkedIn and um freaking amazing screens, all Mac mm. compatible as well. Lee. Yeah. yeah. So that's something you could add to your uh, spaceship NASA room there you've got there. Well, I, yeah. I actually, I mean, once, once, you know, once we're allowed to, to go out again, um, I, sh- I, I worked on a project um, beginning of last year. Uh, <laughs> this is a whole nother show, but it was, it was an idea for a travel show. What a, you know, 2020, what a great time to be pitching a travel show, huh? Um, <laughs> so it was, it was an idea for a travel show, but it, it was all, all around photography, but it was uh, phone photography so we shot the whole thing on phones and i had this idea that i was going to edit it on an ipad and that was just too complicated at the time so I just did it on my computer but like something like the espresso display would have been really cool too you know i i sort of imagined myself on a train or on a plane and you sit there with with your ipad and a second display and you're editing and everyone's looking at you like what a wanker but you're feeling really cool and it's it, yeah it'd be great that was with uh glenn and grace Yes. Is that right? Yeah. 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 yeah I remember that that uh, pilot episode that you shot was actually really good. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. I was... I was actually getting. Um, I felt like a little bit of homesick, you know, mm. seeing Melbourne and the laneways. Uh, but you know, you got to go to Sydney. You got to come to Sydney, guys. The junkies miss you, mate. Um, <laughs> speaking of speaking of travel, I mean, I, I've already mentioned you know, my love of traveling to Japan, and that's no surprise that that's my first destination on my wish list when the borders open. Um, Simon, what's at the top of your bucket list uh, post-pandemic for travel, for photography? Um, it's either Japan or back to Italy. Oh. I, I sort of want to do things I've, um, um, I've done before. It's interesting, actually. I, I look after a, a photo challenge each week for a couple of country, companies, and sometimes I leave it till late, and then I just jump into my Flickr. Yes, I still have a Flickr account. Wow. And, um, <laughs> I go back a few years and I'll, I'll look for an image and I'll, you know, it'll show me images from pre-children when we, when we traveled and lived overseas and stuff. When you had a life. No. <laughs> I'm not going to play it out That's loud. all right. I'm a new dad. I can say that. Yeah, exactly. How's the sleep going? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what sleep? Yes, exactly. But I don't know. I mean, I just look at the photos I used to take when we go on holidays before I got a real camera and go, oh, geez, I wish I had, you know, I wish I knew what mm. I knew now kind of thing. So, mm. um, yeah, Japan for a couple of different reasons. Um, I want to go ski there, but um, I want to go take photos there. Uh, and Italy, one of my clients has got uh, a whole stack of new, dare I use the word influencer? Um, they're, just, they're just people with cameras, but um, they're, they're posting a lot of outdoor stuff, uh, you know, in the Dolomites and stuff like that. And it just looks amazing in parts, parts where I haven't traveled. So probably there. Wow. Mm. Well, 
good friend of mine runs uh, workshops in uh, Italy, Ugo Che and the Dolomites. So uh, I've got to hook you guys up when you go. Oh, that sounds yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. He's oh, awesome Lee guy. Herbert, Lee Herbert, where are you heading? Um, if, funnily enough, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the trend, and uh, the wife and I were actually talking about this. Neither of us have been to Japan, and it's it's right at the top of the bucket list. So we mm-hmm. definitely really want to go to Japan. And my brother went there a few years ago with his wife, and they absolutely loved it. Um, yep. And yeah, so I'm, it, I, you know, I think I think the thing that's even before I was into photography and video and all that stuff, I think Japan's always fascinated me because, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but my impression of Japan is that it's just so different to what we're used to in the west that i really want to sort of go there and experience it because it it would just be like on the one hand similar in some ways but on the other hand completely different yeah it is yeah there's a lot of familiarities but it's everything is a delight and everything's a surprise um actually pre pre pre-pandemic i was looking at organizing i was in the early stages of planning uh some photography tours in tokyo Um, and then and then all of a sudden I had uh, Ian and Rena Tan on board and a few people from the Fuji XOS group. And, um, yeah, but then obviously things changed. Yeah, but it's still on the cards. It's still on the cards one day. We can head back there. We'll get our vaccine passports. And, um, anyway, what about you, Leader Pros? What's at the top of your bucket list? Uh, that would be Japan as well, actually. Wow. Uh, yes. So I, I have been talking with Grace about going to Japan. Uh, I went to Japan oh, 2009, I think it was. Uh, Panasonic, it worked? actually. No. Oh, wow. Panasonic, uh, not Fuji. Um, I, I won a free trip to go there for selling lots and lots of cameras. Um, wow. They took me to a factory tour and put me up in a five-star hotel. And um, after that, I probably um, sold a couple of Panasonic cameras, but you know, I switched to Fuji and started working for them. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't when Andy was at Panasonic, was it? It was. It was. <gasps> the conspiracy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was way back when. Um, but uh, yeah, since since uh, obviously Panasonic has come very big into the game of mirrorless. So I'm very kind of envious that I don't have one. You know, I start seeing them out there, the you know, the SH1s and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's a really nice camera. Have you yeah. shot with it? Um, yeah, I was. Um, Panasonic loaned me one for a little while. For I, w- I was doing a, a presentation on HDR, and there was some HDR stuff that that only they did. Um, so they loaned me an S one H for a, a month or two last year, and it was it was great. Yeah, no, it's a lovely it's a lovely camera. It's um, again, mm-hmm. I'm 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 locked into Sony for now, um, but. Uh, it's. I've been saying this for a while now. It's very hard to buy a bad camera these days, no matter what you go with. That's true. That's yep. true. Now, Simon, you're across social media, so I'm going to end it here. What's your the most standout favorite funny meme that you've seen in the last month? Anything that that you've come across that you've just had a had a bit of a chuckle to yourself and going, you know what? That sums up. That you, sums up what I do. I have a lot of chuckles, um, but. Um, Here's the thing. It's interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll try and make it short. Uh, I have. Hey. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lee Herbert. Um, I have. I have. There's a different laugh. You know, like I might be scrolling through and I'll see something and I'll go, "Oh, that's funny." But today I popped downstairs to make a coffee, and um, about one o'clock in the afternoon. It's the latest I have coffee now, despite what you might think. Internet. I'm down to two cups. Um, and I had a quick look on TikTok and there was a video by somebody that was taking the mick out of us being locked down in Victoria. And I can't remember, he said something or other. It's not necessarily a meme. It's just something that's something of interest on the internet based around current affairs, kind of could be a meme. Um, and he said something and I actually had a genuine laugh and I had to stop myself and think, I'm actually really laughing at something as opposed to just going, oh yeah, it's another thing on the internet. But um, not an, a meme necessarily, but Jimmy Rees, aka Jimmy Giggle, um, aka your kids will watch it at some point. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jimmy has been uh, making me laugh uh, quite a bit recently. Um, so if you want a bit of a chuckle, um, find him on he's very funny the whole internet. Uh, yeah, he's he's pretty good at summing up the situation. Uh, and so his take on the Olympics is quite good. Olympics, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I was I was going to say for those who aren't 
in Australia, there's some stuff that he does. that's very Australian, but the thing that I've been actually, that I was sharing with a lot of my international friends was he does this great stuff about um, how packaging for food is decided. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Which, which, which is international. So I think like even for our international viewers slash listeners, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah look, look him up for Jimmy Reese packaging and, and yep. you'll find it. And it's pretty darn funny. And there's, there's a, like a series of them. Nice. Yep. Nice. Well, on that note, thank you very much, uh, Simon, for joining us and uh, for sharing me. your stories. It was always good. And, and for having Lee Herbert's voice in, in your room there. That Hi, was great. I'm Lee Herbert. Mm. And on that note, uh, this has been the sound of 